So it's no secret that for a long time now, when people think of link building, they either think of guest posts or link insertions. Now, as the SEO space shifts to more AI content, backlinks, in my personal opinion, will become more valuable. Now, this also means that more people will put more emphasis into their link building, and as a result, more link insertions and more guest posts will be sold. Now, the issue with this type of link building is that number one, it's very replicable. So if you've bought a backlink, so can your competitor. And number two, because because of the demand for these type of backlinks, the actual websites that are selling guest posts and link insertions are slowly becoming link farms, which means that the value of those links is basically zero. So people are shifting their link building strategies to try and find more unique and harder to get backlinks. And I've actually recently heard a lot of people talk about how PBNs may be a more worthwhile investment than guest posts and link insertions, since you can control a lot more of the variables for that type of link building. Now, I've also heard a lot of people talk about digital PR and how that can also help you get high quality backlinks. Now, put simply, digital PR is basically just applying the usual PR tactics to the digital space. And it is a whole world of its own and I am in no way an expert. But in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about four strategies that we can use to get high quality backlinks with digital PR. So the first one is reactive PR and Hero is the biggest player in this space. If you don't know what Hero is, it's a platform where journalists submit requests to their articles. And if you reply quickly with the right answer, you can be featured on some pretty massive websites. Now with the rise of AI, a lot of people are using AI to reply to these journalists, which has made the process a lot more competitive but I'm still seeing clients do quite well with Hero. So I do recommend that you check that out. Now, I also recommend that you check out Turkle, Help a B2B Writer and Source Bottle. These are just different platforms that can also work quite well. Reactive PR is also a great way of getting that initial contact with the journalists that you can later try and reach out to with some of these next strategies that I'm gonna talk about. By the way, guys, a quick interruption just to talk about clicks. Next Thursday, I will be launching the early beta. And all that means is that the first 50 people to sign up, we'll get an early look at my affordable SEO data tool. The link for the waitlist is pinned in the first comment right under this video. Now, a second strategy that I want to talk about is data publishing. And now this strategy is the one that makes the most sense to me and where I've seen people get the best results. So lots of different ways of doing this. Let's talk about a few examples. The first one is an interactive map. So basically, if you can find some type of data in your niche that you can create an interactive map about, that can actually get shared and picked up by media quite well. Here's an example that's connected to a recipe and cooking blog. It's basically an interactive map where you can find the cheapest Big Mac in your area, in your state, in your city, whatever it is. If we check this page on SEMrush, we're gonna see it has generated 377 referring domains, some pretty solid ones down here. If we scroll down, even cbsnews.com has linked out to that McCheapest interactive map. So pretty solid there. Second thing we can do is create some type of study. Here's an example by onlinecasino.ca. So you just know these guys are dying to get links. And here's a perfect example. They conducted a study and predicted how avid gamers could look in the next 20 years if they didn't change their lifestyle habits. Kind of gnarly to look at this, but regardless, if you also take a look at this on SEMrush, not bad, 71 backlinks, 46 referring domains, and a pretty solid authority score coming in. Also got picked up by some media. A third way of doing this is with infographics and stats. And this is something that I've seen work really well in the SEO space. So I'm sure it can be applied to a lot of other niches. So I've also heard personally from Brian Dean from Backlinko and Gail from Authority Hacker and even Ahrefs does super well with this. And the main thing here is just to create your own data studies and publish that data in some curated article where you can also add in some type of infographic that gets shared around quite a bit. And if you actually check Backlinko on SEMrush, just the top pages for Backlink we're gonna see that ignoring this one, which was a super famous one, we have, here's a study. So we analyzed 4 million Google search results, CTR stats. We analyzed uh, 12 million Google search results. Here's what we learned. Here's another 65 plus statistics. So these statistics, data studies, and case studies also do extremely well and get shared around really well and often get picked up by media. And the last thing is surveys. If you can think of a potential use case for surveys for your audience or for your clients, this is something that also gets picked up and does extremely well with digital PR. Now, next strategy, strategy is newsjacking or trendjacking. And all this is, is basically just getting early on trending topics to get eyeballs and hopefully links and get picked up also by the media. So when ChatGPT came out, this is an example that applies to me. Everyone in the YouTube SEO space was making videos about how to get started, how to rank with ChatGPT. And that is to this day, still my biggest video. Had I applied that maybe to a blog at the time and picked a specific niche, shared that on Twitter, I'm sure that could have gone picked up and done quite well. So this can literally be applied 
to any niche, anything that's trending at the time or any important news, make sure you're the first one to get there and publish some type of article with some different angle that can often get picked up and does quite well. I do recommend setting up Google alerts for specific terms or some type of alert on Twitter as well for some mention. So you're the first one to hear about that specific type of news. Now, the last strategy here is coining terms. This is something that I've heard also does quite well. The only issue here is that you do need to have either significant authority in a niche or a large audience to kind of back you up. Now, here's an example. Here's a mention of HubSpot which apparently they coined inbound marketing. I had no idea in around 2005. Here's an unclaimed mention that they could reach out to and basically get a backlink from. So coining specific phrases or terms also does quite well and can get picked up by the media. Now there's a whole nother section of digital PR that I think is probably the most complicated part. And that's the actual pitching and outreach of these journalists. And now I'm not talking about reactive PR here. I'm not talking about Hero. I'm talking about maybe when you're doing news jacking or trend jacking, or you have some new case studies, some new data study that you wanna get featured in media outlets, you do have to pitch a lot of journalists. So working on your pitch here is going to be essential, but also finding the right journalists is going to be a deal breaker. So here's a few resources. The first one is muckrack, muckrack.com. I've heard that this is probably the best tool. The only issue is that the pricing isn't available on the website. You have to contact them, which means it's going to be extremely expensive. Now for lower price platforms, there's Prowly by SEMrush, which I honestly haven't heard great things about, but do feel free to try it out. There's also journalink.com which is priced decently well, and I think to something similar. And I've also recently found Journal Finder, which apparently is a massive database of journalists, and you can get access to that for only 100 bucks a month. There's some wait list going on right now, but I have heard good things about Journal Finder. Now, if there's something missing or there's other resources that could be helpful, leave them down in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.